Hi folks, Christy from Shark Pixel here and I am excited to bring you another great new feature in the Photoshop beta that has just been released. And in this video, we are going to talk about how to add just about anything to your images with just a sentence of text. This is generative AI, that's the technology, and what Photoshop is doing is integrating something called generative fill into Photoshop. Now, yes, you do have to have the beta to see these features in action, and you can do that by going to your Creative Cloud app. You're going to open the app, go over to the left-hand side to the beta app section, find Photoshop, and download or update that Photoshop beta app. It's a public beta, everybody can try it out, and I can't wait to see what you guys think of it. So we are going to go ahead and jump right in. I did wanna mention that you do have to be connected to the internet for this feature to work. All of the AI generative features, which some of you may be familiar with if you have checked out Adobe Firefly, they, these features have to beam your image up to the cloud. It's going to take a reference of your entire image, look at the attributes, look at the lighting, look at the perspective, and try and give you the best possible result that you are looking for. That's what makes this such a game changer, and I'm excited to be talking to you about it today. So we'll get started. We're going to jump right in. So you can see here that I am in the Photoshop beta, so you can tell that it's the beta there. And if you see a little bar on your screen pop up after you make a selection of any sort, so we can start with the lasso tool. I'm just gonna make a quick selection around this flower headpiece, and you'll see a new little bar show up. This little bar is called the contextual taskbar. This is an area that Photoshop has created for you and it has all the next steps after you've done something in Photoshop. So you've made a selection. What are the appropriate next steps that you might do to that selection? You may invert it, you may feather that selection, you may want to fill that selection with something. This contextual menu bar is gonna have all of your no-brainer next step uh, steps in one spot for you. So this is gonna pop around a little bit. It's also going to have all of your generative AI prompts, uh, prompt areas in it. So if you don't see this taskbar for any reason, you can come up to the window section and you can scroll down to the bottom where you will see the contextual taskbar as an option. Make sure that it has a check mark next to it. That's how you know that it's going to be visible. So I've made a selection of this headdress. Okay, let me just make it a little bit better here. A little bit more of just the flowers. And let's say we wanted to turn this into a hat, okay? We're gonna go up to our contextual menu bar. We are going to go ahead and add our prompt. So I'm gonna make this prompt say, bright red hat. And then I'm gonna come over to my next step, which is this button right here in the contextual taskbar called generate. I'm gonna go ahead and click generate. So what this is doing now, Photoshop is going to beam your image up to the cloud. So yes, you do have to be con connected to internet. It's gonna look at all the attributes of the image. Where is the sun shining from? Is it harsh light? Is it soft light? Is the light coming from the left or the right or straight from above? And it's going to make its um, suggestions for you as to what you're looking for. So as you can see, we put in bright red hat and it's given us not just one suggestion or option to choose from, but it's given you three. So you can look through your variations in two different places. You do have these arrows in your contextual taskbar and you can go through them and cycle through the different options that they've given you like that. You also have the options in your properties window to look at the variations in there as well. So. Because this is in beta, not everything is gonna work properly the first time. And what Photoshop is hoping is that you will help them crowdsource, if you will, um, a better AI generative fill. 
So the way that you can do that is by giving a little bit of feedback to Adobe. So right up here in our contextual menu bar, you can see a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you like this result, you can go ahead and have a thumbs up and it gives you the option to tell them more about it. If you feel it's inappropriate, you can always go ahead and flag the, um, the specific variation or the specific fill. And if you'd like more options, you can come in here, you can hide the bar, you can reset the position of the bar, and you can also pin this bar. If you have this unpinned, it's going to end up bouncing around your image to wherever your mouse is or wherever your selection is. For me, I found that a little bit annoying, so I did want to go in and make sure that that bar is pinned into one spot and it doesn't move. All right, so I like that. Let's go on, let's try something else. We've got this image here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection of this helmet and let's see what we can get. So I don't want to include the hand because I like the hand. But maybe what we could do, see how the, the bar has relocated to down here? Let's go ahead and put in our fill prompt and let's choose human skull looking um, right. Uh, let's put in profile of human skull. All right. And let's hit generate. Again, it's going to send it up to the cloud, going to do its magic, and then it will give you a couple different results. Now, keep in mind, like I said, you don't necessarily, if you've been experimenting with AI previously, you do not need to put in a bunch of descripting words that would match your image. And the reason for that is because you're already kind of doing that by beaming your image up to the cloud. And those specific attributes, whether it's cloudy, where the light direction is coming from, is it hazy, is it bright sun, you know, what's the coloration of your image, all of those things are actually being pulled out and chosen by the AI. And the fix that they put into your image is going to match those attributes. So it's really fantastic. So you can see here is one of our skulls that was created and there's another one and there's another one. So a little bit off on the scaling, I would say, but um, that's not a problem. I think that, that what that has to deal with is the size of the selection that you create. So if you wanted a smaller skull, I would maybe go in with the clone stamp in the areas around it and then you could make a smaller selection and have that skull be a little bit more appropriately sized. So let's move on to our next image. So here I would like to just add a few fish into the photograph and I just want to point out the shape that you make that selection is going to be very important when you are doing this. So I'm going to try and make a fish shape, a couple fish shapes here to make it look like some fish of different sizes are swimming around. Maybe we'll put some bigger ones here. And also, don't be afraid to put some of your fish over the subject. And so what I'm doing is using the lasso tool to create my fish shapes. Now you can see why that contextual taskbar is getting in my way a little bit. We do have a few fish. I can see one there and one there, but I would like a few more. So we've got a couple. All right, let's go ahead and see how it does. In our generative fill box, we are going to put in colorful fish school of fish swimming and we're going to choose generate and there we go so we have three different options we have a couple different fish they don't seem very colorful seem like they're mostly white but that's okay um, they are giving me some good examples of some fish swimming around so maybe we'll do one more generate 
Let's see if we can get some better results here. All right, so I like these ones that are swimming around here. So there are a couple that I would consider keeping. All right, lastly, we're just gonna go ahead and add sharks because let's face it, I am going to be adding sharks to almost any image that I have now. I'm going to go ahead and pin this taskbar up there because I definitely do not want to have it popping around on me while I'm trying to make my selections. So we'll make some, some outlines here. So we've got our selection for our sharks. So let's put in some prompt information. Let's go ahead and put in uh, reef sharks swimming on the bottom of the ocean. Go ahead and generate. And while I've got you here, if you would like to check out my ebook, you can. It is 20 Photoshop retouching tips for photographers, especially portrait photographers. This is a game changer. You can download this from the link in the description. So definitely check that out. And let's see what it has given us now. All right, we got two sharks looking good. They are definitely reef sharks. No, that one look, looking a little bit weird. But if for any reason you see some inconsistencies or you want to try again, you can always hit generate again and check it out the second time and see what the second result gives you. All right, I love that one. I think that one looks nice and realistic. And so I will go with that one. So our shark before and our shark after. I love that she has a little baby reef shark swimming right next to her, but the possibilities are endless. Again, if you've learned something new, if you've liked what I have done in these videos, please like, please subscribe, and definitely share if you are interested in getting the word out about this generative fill. Again, it is right here in your contextual taskbar. If you want another place to locate it, it is up in the edit menu under generative fill, right in there. That's gonna give you the same option. So check out the other three videos that I have and I will see you on one of those videos.